Thank you. Thank you, Paul, and for the Metro Project for organizing the event. Uh, I am delighted to be here uh, among these various team colleagues and experts uh, and to start the session today. So before talking about the upcoming conference, let me just first recap of what the mandate of the process is, uh, what happened in the first conference that took place in November 2019, the results as well as the main areas of debate, and then I will uh, cover a little bit the current conference. So as for the mandate of the conference in December 2018, the General Assembly adopted a decision to entrust the UN Secretary General, General to convene a conference beginning in 2019 and annually therefore after uh, until the conference concludes the elaboration of legally binding treaty establishing a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapon of mass destruction. In the first conference, which took place in November 2019 in New York in the, in the UN headquarter, nearly all states in the region participated, so 21 members of the Arab League states and Iran, Israel did not participate. The discussion included general and thematic debates where states expressed their position on core issues related to the zone. Uh, the conference produced three items. The first one is a political declaration, uh, re which reaffirmed the uh, participating states commitment to pursue a legally binding treaty to establish the zone uh, on the basis of arrangement freely arrived at the consensus by states of the region and extending an opening uh, ended invitation to all states in the region to join the process. Uh, the conference also adopted two decisions. The first dec was decision was determined that the presidency of the conference will allow the English, uh, will follow, sorry, the Eng English alphabetical order starting from Jordan, uh, meaning that for the upcoming conference, the Kuwait will assume the presidency from Jordan. The second decision determined that the timing of the future of future conferences, which will be held annually in the third week of every November for five days. Participation states also agreed to invite representative of existing nuclear weapon free states and other experts to share good practices and lessons learned in the establishment of such zones before the second session of the conference. Uh, UNODA organized two events to that extent in July 2020 and February 2021. Uh, the second session that was supposed to take place in November 2020 was postponed due to COVID and will take place next week in New York. So two issues that proved to be contentious uh, during the first conference. The first was more procedural in nature and it's related to the rules of procedures of the conference. Several sessions were devoted to negotiating, to negotiating the rules of procedures. One, on one end, some countries held that in order to prevent any single country from holding the conference process hostage, only substantial decisions should be made uh, by consensus. On the other end, uh, other really feared that they define themselves in automatic minority and insisted that all decisions uh, should be made by consensus. The second issue was more substantial in nature and which was related to really the scope of the treaty. Some countries held that um, the issue of means of delivery is not part of the official scope of the treaty, as indicated by the name of the conference. Uh, and nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons will, and once nuclear, uh, chemical, and biological weapons will be eliminated, the question of delivery system is mute due to the absence of play, payloads. On the other end, um, Others saw uh, the means of delivery as an equal part of the conference mandate, mandate that refers to the 1995 uh, NPT Middle East Resolution as the terms of reference, which called for the establishment of effect an effectively verifiable Middle East free of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons and their delivery system. As we're approaching the second conference, those two issues will continue to be uh, featured in the discussion that lead to the conference as well as during the week long meeting. Mm -hmm. Another issue that participating states are considering right now is what will be the product of the second conference. And obviously that will be also uh, during the deliberation of the week that we'll meet. Products that could be considered include another short political statement or more operational decisions related to the outcome of the conference or its conduct. Uh, original states moving from general discussion in the first session as they're moving uh, from from the more general discussion in the first conference to the more thematic uh, debate process, they are also looking for a more substantial discussion about the various component of the future zone. 
And in that context, they, are, they were presented already about the experiences of other zones that created a new program free zone. To that effect, issues such as obligations, verification, peaceful nuclear applications, governance and protocols uh, will surely feature in the discussion next week. Uh, I will comments that could be helpful uh, to be considered by uh, the participating country. So first, given regional states receive in-depth review of the establishments of nuclear weapon free zones, they may also want to consider holding several informal sessions that could inform their discussion on challenges related to chemical and biological weapons. The experiences of the OPCW and the, IS the ISU are invaluable in assessing what worked, uh, but also what does not work and how the region may be able to address it on a regional basis. Uh, the working papers submitted by these organizations are a good start and a basis for such a discussion. Uh, and regional state will have uh, to consider a side of the obligation under the NPT, whether those are sufficient, but also whether the restriction as well as the tools under the CWC and BWC are sufficient. Uh, the second point was related to regional state. Um, they also learned about the negotiation process, process itself of establishing existing nuclear, nuclear weapon free zone. They may want to explore also lessons learned from various regional non-proliferation negotiations, such, such as the 1990 Arms Control and Regional Security Working Group, the Glion Geneva informal consultations that took place in 2003-2004, and verification and disarmament and compliance challenges on all three domains, all of which took place in the region and beyond, have, have, which also have invaluable lessons that should inform the deliberation. Last, regional state have also to balance between three factors, between what is desirable, what is achievable, and what is sustainable. These may not be the same things, and aiming to eye may render the treaty almost impossible to achieve but aiming too low will make the treaty ineffective and defeating the purpose of the 1995 Middle East Resolution. It will be not a simple balancing act, but probably given the security situation in the region and deep mistrust, state will want to avoid adopting, adopting only the lowest common denominator. With that, Paul, the screen is yours. <laughs>